In this lecture, we are going to learn about strings and file input output. Talking about strings, there are two different ways that you can represent them in MATLAB. One, it's by using character arrays. The other one is string scalars. Character arrays can be created by writing bunch of characters in between single quotes. Here, the variable a is a character array. If you check the class, it's going to be char. If you check the size, it's going to be the total number of characters in the array. Now you can access individual elements from this character array like a regular vector array. If you use double quotes instead of single quotes, you're going to create string scalars. So if you check the class of the variable b, it's going to be string. And if you check the size, it's one by one. Remember, one by one is a scalar. Now let's look at the character arrays in much more depth before venturing into string scalars. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to try out is, you know, creating a character array. So I've created A is CS20, B is MATLAB, both of them are within single quotes. Now I can treat these two character arrays like numerical vectors in MATLAB. If you remember, if we had two different numerical vectors like, you know, D and E, we could put them together by, you know, just writing them this way. Okay, similarly, you would be able to do exactly the same using the character arrays. But is this the only way? Uh, if you remember in, in the previous homework, you have seen this function called as strcat, which stands for string cat or string concatenation. So that's one more way you could put your two different character arrays together. Now let's see the subtle differences between using square brackets for concatenation versus the function string cat. If you observe the variable a has MATLAB along with some trailing blank spaces. If you use square brackets, the trailing spaces are preserved. But if you use string cat, the trailing blank spaces vanish. Something to remember. Okay, so not all functions or, or functionalities in MATLAB work the same way. All right, so moving on, let's try to see if we'll be able to create a character matrix. Okay, so I have three different variables here, A, B, and C, uh, with, you know, their respective character arrays. So while putting A and B together, I don't face any issue. I just created a two by six character array or a character matrix. Now let's try to put B and C together. See, there's an issue. The problem is B has six characters and C has only four characters. Now I can compensate for it by adding few blank spaces. And now I'll be able to put those two together into a character matrix. Now let me uh, create a character matrix with all the three of these character arrays. So now I have a three by six character matrix. You can think of this as a numerical matrix. You know, all the matrices that you have seen so far, the way you uh, access the elements or rows or columns or sub matrices, it's going to be the same for this character matrix as well. So let me show you a few more operations on this and so here I'm going to I'm going to access the second row till the third row there's no fourth row in it and first and, and second columns so that's what that's why I just have CO and CS right there okay now let's move on to string scalars now this kind of representation of strings in MATLAB is pretty new. I think it's been there around for just a couple of years. Okay, so one interesting thing to know about string scalars or, or you know, characters between double quotes is that they use a cell based representation underneath. Okay, so if I said A curly brackets of one, it is showing me the character array that has been preserved 
in a cell. So we can summarize that string scalars are basically cells with character arrays. Now let's see what's going to happen if I just check the size because it's just a single cell, it's going to be one by one. Uh, even if you write like a long sentence or, a, or an entire novel, you know, the size is always going to be one by one. But if you access the contents within the cell using a curly brackets of one, that is when you actually get the size of the character array that has been preserved in that cell. Now, String scalars offer a very convenient way of representation of strings. Uh, you know, you could put together two different strings using the plus operator. You know, A plus B equals to hi, how are you there? Uh, even string cat works for, for this. But instead, if you use the square brackets, that is going to mess this up because both of these are like cells. It's just going to put those two cells together, like hi and how are you? Um, you may want to access those contents before putting them together. Okay, so you could use square brackets, a curly brackets of one, comma, b curly brackets of one. So that way you put the contents together. Moving on, let's try to understand how search engines work. If I search for the keyword Vermont in, in Google, then it's going to give me a bunch of websites that have that word Vermont in it. Okay, so basically if you uh, try to understand how this web page indexing works. It uses a model called as bag of words. Uh, Google is going to go through the entire website and you know create a list of words that are occurring in it. So for that, it uses string tokens. Okay, so string tokens. Let's try to uh, see how we can use MATLAB to process a string and identify the tokens in it. Now it is common sense that words are separated using a blank space. Okay, so if we want to split a string, it is ideal to split it at a blank space. So MATLAB has this inbuilt function called a string token or strtok. Uh, so when you use it, it can split the string into two strings at the first blank space that it sees. Okay, now you can keep repeating it you parse the entire document now whatever we've seen so far it's like just the tip of iceberg there are many many more string manipulation options in matlab okay so uh, let's move on to the next topic which is file input output um, with this you'll get the power of accessing analyzing modifying and storing files using matlab now the most basic file input output commands are load and save. These are pretty useful, but they are very limited in their use. For instance, let's say uh, you have worked on your programming assignment and then you're trying to share your data with your friend. So you have a bunch of variables in your workspace. You could do it using the save workspace button there or simply by typing save on your command prompt. It saved it in, in this file matlab.mat. You could also change that name if you like to. Okay, so what your friend has to do is simply say load matlab.mat on the command prompt and all the variables that you have saved show up exactly the same. Now load command can also work on basic file types like text file. So let's say I have data one, two, three, four uh, in an organized way in a text file and if I say load text.txt you see that MATLAB was able to load it as a matrix. Now let me do uh, a small modification to it. Let me remove that one element there. Okay, so it's no longer a matrix so load text.txt wouldn't work saying that the number of uh, you know row elements is not the same. Now let me give you a trick for accessing contents from any sort of file that is out there. Okay, so you can use MATLAB import tool. For instance, look at this sample file. It has so many columns. All I have to do is use the import tool, select that spreadsheet, and MATLAB is gonna figure out a way to import it as a table, string array, cell array, numeric array, etc., etc. 
all you have to do is click on that import selection and then MATLAB imports it for you. Now you could navigate to that, uh, you know, variable in your workspace and you clearly see that all the columns have been imported. The best part about import tool is that MATLAB also creates code for you. Okay, so when I'm importing it, so I could generate the script in which I could examine the MATLAB code as to how MATLAB is importing, you know, the contents of that file and make any changes if, if you know, I want to. This comes very handy. Uh, we're going to go over this later on in depth.